Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So today we are in chapter 7, Ionic Equilibrium. And we're going to look into the subtopic of 7.1 acid and bases, part 5 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn about the definition of the buffer solution. And we're also going to learn on how to describe qualitatively on how a buffer solution controls its pH. Next, we're going to derive and write the henderson hasselbach equation in which it will equal to pH equal to pKa plus log conjugate base divided by the weak acid. And last but not least, we're going to look into the calculation for the pH of the buffer solution, in which, in this video, we're going to focus on the acidic buffer solution. Alright, so without any further ado, let us start. So, buffer solution. Buffer solution is basically a solution in which it has the ability to maintain its pH when a small amount of a strong acid or a strong base is added to the solution. Buffer solution can basically contain a weak acid and its salt, which is the conjugate base salt, or it can exist based on the combination of the weak base and its salt, which is the conjugate acid salt. So for the first mixture here, which is weak acid and the conjugate base salt, it's going to produce an acidic buffer solution with a pH less than 7. For the second situation here, it's going to produce a basic buffer solution with a pH greater than 7. And for now, let us look into the acidic buffer solution first, which has a pH less than 7 in this video. So as mentioned, an acidic buffer solution can be prepared by mixing a weak acid and its salt, which is the conjugate base. Let's say if we have an example for the acetic acid or the ethanoic acid, and it's going to be reacting with the sodium ethanoate, which is a conjugate base salt. So when we mix the acetic acid, which consists of CH3COOH, as well as the aqueous salt of the CH3COONA, when we mix them together, what we're going to produce here is an acidic buffer. So it's going to have reaction in the buffer solution. So first, we're going to have a partial dissociation of the ethanoic acid, in which when it reacts in water, it's going to produce an ethanoic aqueous ion, as well as the history of plus aqueous ion. And since it is a weak acid, so it's going to dissociate partially inside the buffer. Meanwhile, for the conjugate base salt, it's going to dissociate completely in order to produce the ethanoic aqueous ion as well as the Na plus ion here. And as what you can see here, the CH3COO minus will keep on be producing. So it have a lot of them in the buffer solution. And this concentration is mainly come from the complete dissociation of the CH3COO and A. And as what you can see, basically the Na plus is, is also present inside the buffer. But it will not be involved in the reaction because it acting as a spectator ion. Dia tidak terlibat. And biasanya, we're going to ignore that. Okay, so what we are interested in is these two species here. Now, we're going to look about the action of the acidic buffer solution. As what the definition said, the buffer solution can maintain its pH when a small amount of acid or base is added to the solution. So we're going to see when a small amount of acid is added into uh, the buffer solution, the H plus will be consumed by the ethanoid ion here, which is a negatively charged. So when it is being added, it will be consumed by the ethanoid ion and this is going to produce the CH3COOH. And as a result, there will be only a small change in the pH, and this will cause the concentration of the ethanoic ion to be decreases. Meanwhile, the concentration of the ethanoic acid or the acetic acid to be increases because they're going to be forming it more. And because of these properties, only a slight change in pH is occurring. Similarly, you can also add a small amount of base into the buffer solution. So when you add a small amount of base, the negative ion here will take the proton from the CH3COOH. 
So what gonna happen here is that a water gonna be formed and and the uh, ethanol aqueous ion concentration will be increases. So as a result, there will be only small change in the pH and the concentration of the ethanol ion increases. Meanwhile, the concentration of the ethanol acid because it has been used up, it gonna be decreases. Okay, so now we have learned about the story or the explanation theoretically. So here are the actions of the acidic buffer solution. So as I, as I mentioned earlier, this is the buffer solution that containing the ethanoic acid as well as the conjugate base salt. So it's going to dissociate in order to form CH3COO- and we're also going to have the reverse direction in order to produce this one and that one. And this concentration is mainly come from the dissociation of the salt. So when we add H+, it's going to be reacting with the negative ion, which is the ethanoid ion, in order to produce the acid back. If we add our base into the reaction, then we're going to use up our acid in order to produce ethanoid ion as well as the water. So here, I like the summary. And as, as I mentioned, we're going to prove that using a anderson hasselbach equation, which is here. So uh, this is the reaction equation that we have made inside the buffer. And in order to derive the henderson hasselbach equation, first thing first, we need to construct the Ka expression. So according to this, we have our Ka, which is our concentration of the CH3COO- multiplied by the concentration of another product, which is the H+, divided by the concentration of the reactant. And now we're going to make our H plus to be the subject. So we're going to bring this term to the right hand side and then we're going to divide that with our concentration of the ethanoid. And then we're going to negative log both sides. So we're going to put negative log here and also a negative log here. And then we're going to split the um, expression here because it's going to be Ka multiplied by CH3COOH divided by the concentration of CH3COO- minus. So it's going to be negative log on this side and negative log on the other side here. Okay, And as what you can see, uh, the negative log H plus is basically equal to pH. Meanwhile, the negative log Ka is basically equal to pKa. And for this term here, it's basically according to the rule of, log of the logarithm. So we know that negative log A over B is basically equal to the log of B over A. So we're going to diminish the negative sign and then we're going to flip the, den the denominator to numerator and the numerator to the denominator here. And as a result, we're going to get our henderson hasselbach equation as shown. Okay. And as for the general equation, we can use we can use the equation here, which is the pH is equal to pKa plus log of the conjugate base divided by the weak acid. So here are the final formula that you need to know for the henderson hasselbach equation. And we're going to use this equation in order to solve problem regarding the buffer solution. So now, let us look into the example. So for example, number one, one liter of a buffer solution is prepared by mixing 0.1 molar of the ethanoic acid with 0.1 molar of the CH3COONA. So as what you can see here, it is a mixture between a weak acid as well as the conjugate base salt. Okay, so you can imagine it to be the situation as what you have looked before. Okay. And it has a 1 liter volume. So, first thing first, the question asks us to calculate the pH of the buffer solution where the Ka value for the ethanoic acid is given. So, in order to find the pH of the buffer solution, we need to use the henderson hasselbach equation in which pH is equal to the pKa. So, Ka refers to the weak acid. So, it's going to be pKa plus log concentration of the conjugate base divided by the weak acid. Okay, so our pH is something that we need to figure out and then pKa is the value here is known to be 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 5 
And then for the conjugate base, we know that our conjugate base is referring to the CH3COO minus. Meanwhile, for our weak acid, it's basically referred to the CH3COOH. So we're going to substitute that in here. And now we're going to substitute the value of Ka, which is pKa is equal to the negative log Ka, which is here. And then last log for the conjugate base, which is 0 0.10 molar, divided by the concentration of the acid, which is 0 0.10 molar. So once you calculate that inside the calculator, you're going to get the pH for the buffer solution to be 4.74. Okay. And now, what's going to happen when you add up H plus? What happened to the pH? And this is related to the equation number two here. So we need to calculate the pH of the buffer solution after the addition of the 0 0.02 molar HCl. So HCl here will provide H plus, which is 0 0.02 molar of the H plus that is being added into the system. So we need to calculate the new pH. So uh, the first thing first is we need to write the equation. So for the buffer action here, you can say that when the H plus is added, it's going to react with the negative uh, species here, which is the ethanoic ion, in order to produce the ethanoic acid, which is in the states of equilibrium. And in order to find the new concentration, uh, we need to do the ice table because it's involving a concentration at equilibrium. So we have the initial concentration, the change in the concentration, as well as the concentration at equilibrium. So initially, the concentration of the CH3COO- is 0.1. Okay. Mean, meanwhile, the concentration of H+, you add up as much as 0.02. And for the concentration of the acid here, is similar, which is 0.1. Okay. And from here, uh, you're going to deduct with 0 0.02 because H plus is going to be used up completely. Okay, so H plus is added and then we're going to use it completely in order to react with the CH3CO minus. So this certain amount is similar on both sides. And as a result, plus 0 0.02 is added to the concentration of the ethanoic acid. And at equilibrium, we're going to get a new concentration, which is the ethanoic ion going to have a concentration of 0 0.08. The H plus is going to be 0 because it has been used up to react completely. And then for the ethanoic acid, we're going to get 0 0.12. And from here, we can use the henderson hessel batch equation, where pH is equal to the pKa plus log conjugate base divided by the weak acid. So Ka here is referring to the weak acid. Okay, is always at the denominator part. So we're going to substitute the value of Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And then we're going to substitute the new concentration of the conjugate base. So our conjugate base here is 0 0.08. Our weak acid is this one, which is 0 0.12. So once we plug that in inside the calculator, we're going to get a new pH, which is 4.57. Okay, and as what you can see here, Initially, the pH of the buffer is 4.74. This is based on the equation number one. And now the pH of the buffer, when H plus is being added, it's going to reduce a little bit, which is 4.57. So we can say that mathematically, it can still be maintained because it only changed it slightly. Okay. And now for the question number B here, we're going to see what's going to happen if we're going to add the pH of the buffer, add up with a little bit of the hydroxide ion. What's going to happen to the pH here? So let us look about that in the next slide. Okay, so similar situation. Let's say if you add up your hydroxide ion, which is as much as 0 0.02 molar. Where the hydroxide comes from the NaOH that has been transferred into the buffer. Okay, so first thing first, you need to do the buffer action. When the hydroxide ion is being added, it's gonna be reacting with the acid. So it's gonna produce CH3COO as well as the liquid water. So we're gonna use the ice table because we need to find the new concentration at equilibrium. 
So initially, the concentration of an acid going to be 0 0.1 The concentration of OH at the beginning of the reaction is 0 0.02. The concentration of the conjugate base salt is going to be 0 0.1. And for the water, we can ignore that because it is in the pure liquid. So it's not going to involve in our expression. And then for the change in the concentration, the negative OH will react completely, so it's going to be deducted with 0 0.02, similar it to here. Okay, so all the OH ion is being used up, and the reactant will be reacted at the similar amount. And then for the concentration of the ethanoate ion, it will be increases by 0 0.02, and the concentration at equilibrium we're going to get 0 0.08, 0, and 0 0.12. So this is our new concentration. And as usual, in order to find the pH of the buffer, we need to use the henderson hasselbach equation, in which pH is equal to pKa plus log conjugate base divided by the weak acid. Okay, so the weak acid is always at the denominator part. So we're going to substitute the value, Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And then our conjugate base, so our conjugate base is our CH3COO minus, which is 0 0.12, and then our weak acid to be 0 0.08. So once we substitute that inside our calculator, we're going to get our new pH, which is 4.92. Okay, and as what I've talked before, initially the pH of the buffer for equation number one is 4.74. When acid is being added, it's going to reduce a little bit to 4.57. And then we, when we're going to add hydroxide, the pH of the buffer will increase slightly from 4.74 to become 4.92. And it only changes slightly, and hence we can say that the buffer solution can maintain its pH when a small amount of acid or a small amount of base is added to the system. Okay, And this is how we prove it mathematically. Alright, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!